good evening to all respectable participants i hereby congratulate bcmg for taking the initiative for conducting these sessions for the benefit of our legal fraternity i am extremely thankful to honorable chairman patil sir honorable chair vice chairman desai sir then honorable member bci shri jay bhave sir then coordinator honorable dr uday varunjikar sir then course coordinator sujata jadhav madam and all executive bcmg members i am extremely thankful for giving me an opportunity to interact with you on the electricity act 2003 now yesterday the exam schedule has been declared now the exam will be conducted on 25th june so we have very limited time available for preparing for the exam and considering the vast syllabus for the exam so it is our necessary for us to study the various acts in a concentrated and focused way only from the perspective of appearing for the exam so i am considering this aspect just today i will have a session on the electricity act 2003 electricity act 2003 is a very big act it consists of about 185 sections so it is not possible for to cover all these sections in the one hour session what i have done from exam perspective i have identified certain sections which are directly relevant and relevant to the uh, for the preparation of exam so i will directly go with the my presentation i have prepared around 50 mcqs probable 50 plus mcqs Uh, for our members i will share that file also i will discuss that file right now during the session also electricity act and consumer protection act are very important because no one can live without electricity electricity is a very important thing so if we see the preamble of the electricity act there is also provision of protection of interest of consumers and providing supply to all citizens consumer protection act is already available for the protection of consumers so we have to see the provisions of the electricity act 2003 there are three segments in the electricity act we if we see generation side transmission side and distribution side directly as a end user we are directly connected with the distribution side only Gen gen moreover electricity act as a apart from the legal provision many engineering and technical aspects are also involved in the electricity act so during session we will not touch to the generation and transmission aspect directly we will go to the distribution system distributing system so just i will start my presentation just i will go to the directly to the mcq instead of going to the different section just i have shared those sections with the members on some relevant sections are section 42 section 43 47 56 57 62 70 76 to 97 then 110 then 126 127 135 to 140 all these sections we will see and i have covered all these sections in the mcq if we will go through the mcq and even if you have any query about it that uh, we will cover it at the end of the session just i will share my file is it visible yes sir thank you we can see see electricity act uh, came into force on 2nd june 2003 in fact on 26th may uh, it received a assent from the president and gazette notification was released on 2 june 
so this is this can be a first question that is available on the screen that can be a multiple choice answer question also then second in the 54th year of republic of india it was enacted then in the section 3 there is a national electricity policy and tariff policy that will be published by the that powers are for publishing that policy is available with the central government then the fourth question without license nobody can transmit electricity distribute electricity or undertake trading in the electricity so therefore license is necessary for transmitting distributing and undertaking the trading business in the electricity sector so who will give the license these powers are given to the appropriate commission of the state in the section 76 to 82 there if we consider this provision 76 to 97 there are provisions related to establishment of central electricity regulatory commission and other is a state electricity regulatory commission so we know that the merc is the regulator at maharashtra level so appropriate commission has the power to grant license to transmit distribute and undertake trading in the electricity system then next question as we have already seen who is responsible for maintaining the system in the distributing area of supply generation license is not certainly not distribute transmission license is not required to maintain the system distribution license is supposed to maintain the distribution system in the area of supply as a end user we are directly connected with the distribution licensee only then we will go to the question number 7 first prior to that i will go to the section 42 section 42 of the electricity act that is the duties of the distribution licensee i have been specified in the section 42 then then we can see that in the electricity act as well as consumer protection act there is a two mechanisms available in the electricity act as well as in the consumer consumer protection act grievance redressal mechanism we all know about the uh, system available in the consumer protection act but in the electricity act also as per uh, section 42 sub section 5 6 and 7 there is a grievance redressal mechanism provided under section uh, 42 section sub 5 6 and 7 so these powers are given to the appropriate commission for framing the regulations now this is the beauty of the electricity act that see all provisions related to consumer protection there are various provisions available with the other acts also but you will find this specific section has been incorporated in the electricity act what is that section 57 57 is a specific section one section is added in the electricity act and probably we will find such section in the electricity we will, we will not find any such uh, section in other acts also so what is this section 57 that is the title of that section is a consumer protection and standard of performances as we know we are using the electricity and the na nature of electricity essential nature of the electricity so there must be a quality service provided by the distribution licensee to the consumers so what is the standard of performances regulation specific regulation has been framed by the merc and according to that certain standards have been framed and accordingly the services are to be provided by the distribution licensee to the consumers if the what is the what they have provided specific any service they have to provide this service within certain period so and so period if the service is not provided within that period then there is a provision to compensate the consumer directly these provisions are available in the electricity act no such provision probably are available in other acts in other in other acts what we have seen there are citizen charters with the, many other departments or many other acts their their standards are fixed their grievance redressal mechanism or complaint mechanism will be available but no such provision for paying a compensation to the consumer is available in other uh, citizen charters or any other act so that is the special provision given in the electricity act so in that case we have to file a complaint before the consumer court means consumer commission for getting relief if the standard of performances or
सर माइक म्यूट झालाय आपला किंवा आत्ता झाला का म्यूट हा ओके ओके येतोय हा येतो सो देर इज स्पेसिफिक प्रोव्हिजन अँड डायरेक्ट कॉम्पेन्सेशन प्रोव्हिजन इज ऑल्सो अव्हेलेबल इन द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ऍक्ट इट प्रोव्हाइड अ ग्रेट रिलीफ टू द कन्झ्युमर अर्निंग कॉम्पेन्सेशन इज नॉट द इश्यू बट पेईंग अ कॉम्पेन्सेशन अँड रिक्वायरिंग डिस्ट्रीब्युशन लायसन्सी टू पे द कॉम्पेन्सेशन मेक्स देअर सर्व्हिसेस कंपेल्स देम टू इम्प्रूव्ह देअर क्वालिटी ऑफ सर्व्हिसेस सो दॅट प्रोव्हिजन इज अव्हेलेबल अंडर सेक्शन फिफ्टी सेव्हन सी राईट नाव just i will give us small background about the regulations related to supply code and standard of performances earlier when the merc has framed the regulations related to supply code 2005 simultaneously uh, supply, uh, standard of performances regulations were available also from since 2005 those were amended in 2014 and now in the 2021 they have clubbed these provisions means supply code for the supply code and standard of performances both these regulations have been clubbed and one common regulation is made available to the consumers from 2021 that we will see that that files and that regulations i will share soft copies of those regulations with you then there is a important provisions related to section 56 disconnection of electricity if any consumer neglects to pay the amount then what are the options available आय थिंक देर वॉज सम टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लेम नेटवर्क चा इश्यू झाला तुमचा हां ठीक आहे आता दिसतंय व्यवस्थित दिसतंय सर दिसतंय हां ठीक आहे ओके 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 देन डिस्कनेक्शन रिलेटेड टू डिस्कनेक्शन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एज पर सेक्शन 56 लायसेंसी कॅन गिव इशू अ डिस्कनेक्शन नोटीस टू द डिफॉल्टेड कंज्युमर अँड डिस्कनेक्ट द सप्लाय 15 डेज नोटीस इज अ मॅन्डेटरी बिफोर डिस्कनेक्टिंग द सप्लाय it is important that if the during that 15 days notice period if consumer deposits the amount then distribution licensee cannot disconnect the supply that is also important provision available to the consumer then this disconnection notice mode of service then how the notice can be served to the consumer so i have taken one question on this aspect also this notice can be given physically this notice can be given in a digital mode also through through sms email whatsapp message this provision is available in the supply code also theek okay. hai then third one printing on the bills and registered post and courier service yes registered post and courier service options are available but printing on bill is not permissible earlier what used to happen m this distribution licensee used to print these notices on the bills and when consumer ask them ki where is the notice they used to show the bills the notice is already printed but it was about the arrears not about the current bill so merc has directed distribution licenses to remove these notices from the bill so printing on the bill this notice printing on the bill is not permissible okay then as per section 56 we had section 56 can be divided in two
वेट वेट सर नेटवर्क गे थोड़ा थाम नमस्कार प्रभुणे साहब आवाज ये है सर सर नेटवर्क डिस्कनेक्ट जाए एक मिनट जॉइन ओके ओके प्रभुणे साहब यू आर म्यूट ठीक है हाँ यस यस प्लीज कंटिन्यू हाँ सॉरी हाँ सॉरी फॉर द इंटरप्शन कहते नेटवर्क का इश्यू है ठीक है एनीवे सो दिस वी वर डिस्कसिंग सेक्शन 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 56 56 1 एंड 2 देयर आर टू प्रोविजंस इफ कंज्यूमर हैज एनी डिस्प्यूट अबाउट द बिल सपोज लाइसेंसी हैज इशूड अ बिल ऑफ 1 लाख रुपीस एंड हिज एवरेज बिल इज अराउंड 1000 रुपीस पर मंथ सो नेचुरली ही विल रेज अ डिस्प्यूट सो इन दैट केस इफ कंज्यूमर डिपॉजिट्स द अमाउंट अंडर प्रोटेस्ट देन आल्सो द सप्लाई विल नॉट बी डिस्कनेक्टेड so there are two conditions to that effect what are the two conditions either he has to deposit that claimed amount or second option is he has to deposit average bill for average monthly bill for the preceding 6 months period so whichever is lower he has to deposit so in that case suppose i have average bill of 1000 rupees then i can deposit 1000 rupees i can dispute that bill under protest i can pay that bill in that condition also distribution licensee cannot disconnect the electricity supply under section 56 now there is a section 562 is also available but section 562 we will discuss at a later stage because i have to discuss that uh, point in detail along with some judgments on that 562 because there are debatable issues about the recovery of under section 562 that we will co cover at the end of the session okay then as per section 43 distribution licensee can recover the security deposit amount from the consumers there is also provision available so earlier uh, as per earlier regulations we are aware that uh, we have to deposit one month bill average one month bill as a security deposit that has been changed in the recent regulations under 2021 and now two month bill has to be paid so there is a one question on this also licensee is entitled to collect amount of security deposit consumers having monthly billing cycle what is the billing average billing of the billing cycle for last 12 months okay then this additional security deposit bill licensee is required to give six months period means six equal in monthly installments can be given this security deposit can be divide, uh, deposited in six monthly installments with the this option is available also for the consumer okay then question 13 this is a recently debated issue whether the licensee is entitled to recover the electricity dues from the previous occupier from the new purchaser or new occupier so what is the provision available right now now with there is a unlimited for the unlimited period means for the previous occupier's arrears that can be recovered from the new purchaser recently honorable supreme court had passed a judgment on this aspect and the regulations to that effect which is even the earlier there was a regulation as per the supply code 2005 as per section sub section 10.5 there was a provision in case of legal heirs only licensee could have recovered the entire amount from the past uh, uh, previous occupier but for the new purchaser other than the legal heirs there were 6 months restriction were provided only for the period of 6 months recovery was permissible but now the situation has been changed now the new regulation is framed by the mrc 2021 and as per that new regulations from the new occupier 
previous areas can be recovered all these uh, the honorable supreme court has passed a judgment in this matter uh, that is kc ninan versus kerala state electricity board and upheld the validity of such all regulations where the powers have been given to them to recover the areas for the unlimited period okay then question see this issue already i have uh, question number 14 i have discussed this issue that under protest we can deposit amount equal to the some claim from him or the average bill whichever is lower on the thing then section 562 the electricity act no sum due from any consumer under the act shall be recoverable after the period of suppose i have areas within last two two years period that can be recovered under section 562 but prior to that if a licensee uh, wants to recover five years period means five years back uh, bill from me then that is not permissible under section 562 if those areas are shown continuously as areas in the current bill then only that recovery is permissible even beyond the two years period but if it is not shown as areas certainly a licensee cannot come and say this is today's 23 they cannot say that these are the areas from the uh, january 18 to march 18 and we want to recover so that is impermissible under section 562 two year period limitation is there then 62 section 62 is related to determination of tariff these powers are given to the appropriate commission central government state government they cannot decide the tariff or even a generation transmission distribution license also uh, cannot decide the tariff the determination of tariff is power rest with the appropriate commission only if you have any grievance against the tariff determined by the mrc then in state electricity regulatory commission then then appeal can be filed before the appeal <coughs> sorry appellate tribunal of electricity appellate because many times what happens if there is a some dispute about the tariff determined by the commission such type of complaints are filed before the district consumer commission or state commission consumer commission but that is not permissible in fact as the tariff orders can be challenged before the appellate tribunal of electricity in case of wrong application of tariff of incorrectly tariff is applied to the consumer then that dispute can be raised before the district commission but what the tariff determined by the commission that cannot be challenged before the district commission that is to be taken before the appellate tribunal of electricity then there is a provision of work of licensee rule this is a section 67 there is a provision if distribution licensee wants to carry out work in their area there are the rules uh, frame for the work of licensee rule and these rules are can be framed by the central government and state government they have the authority okay then central electricity authority is also this provision is available under section 70 so duties and functions are available for the central electricity authority but right now we will not go in much detail with the ca okay then then the appointment means the notification for the nomination of regulator mrc this is a state commission in maharashtra maharashtra electricity regulatory commission is a regulator so notification for that was to be issued within 6 month that is already nominated and that has to be issued by the state government that powers are available with the state government that is available under section 82 okay there are two types of commission central electricity regulatory commission and state electricity regulatory commission there are some functions duties are specified for the crc and mrc also means state electricity regulatory commission okay then as per section 110 as i have said the central government by notification can establish appellate tribunal of electricity appellate tribunal of electricity has to decide appeals against the orders of the adjudicating officer as well as of the orders of the appropriate commission what we have seen earlier so in these cases these appeals against these orders can be challenged or before the appellate tribunal of electricity there is specific provision available in the section 
where in the matter of public interest or a policy matter if state government wants to give some directions so that directions can be given by the state government to the commission but just those are only on the policy related to public interest not in other matters otherwise electricity regulatory commission is a independent body then section 23 sorry uh, sorry section 25 there is a provision to challenge the orders of the appellate tribunal of electricity under section 125 these orders of the appellate tribunal can be challenged before the honorable supreme court that option is available high court appropriate commission if we take the question that is available with the supreme court only theek okay. hai then there is a provision of section 126 what is 126 126 is the unauthorized use of electricity so what is unauthorized use of electricity if the usage of electricity is by any artificial means or by not authorized by the person person or by authority or by the licensee or if it is through the tempered meter or it is used for the purpose for which the electric supply was provided suppose i have taken a connection for my house for the residential purpose and i have opened a shop and i am operating and using that power for the shop for the commercial purpose then that is not permissible that may be a case of unauthorized use of electricity or uh, if i have extended the electricity supply to my neighbor then that call that can be also a case of unauthorized use of electricity so provisions related to these are available under section 126 of the electricity act so when the case of unauthorized use of electricity is noticed there is a assessing officer assessing officer nominated by the distribution licensee he can carry out the assessment that assessment is permissible under section 126 of the electricity act theek okay. hai then if the assessing officer this is important provision this if the office uh, assessing officer reaches to the conclusion that unauthorized use of electricity has taken place so for how much period he will raise the assessment and how he can how much amount he can charge to the consumer the assessment shall be period for now with the amendment in the act uh, 2007 electricity act was amended in 2007 and some sections were amended so by that amended act earlier it was a 3 months period was limitation but now it has been changed and the, for the entire period uh, it can be recovered but in that case if the period is not period is not ascertained the proper period then it will be limited to the 12 months period only for the 12 months period that can be recovered then assessment under 126 shall be made at the rate equal to if the unauthorized use is established the in that case two times rate with the two times penalty will be charged and double tariff rates will be charged to in that case earlier it was a 1.1 and a half time so now it has been amended from 2007 and it had made as a two times the two times recovery can be given the assessment bill can be given if the consumer is aggrieved with the assessment under 126 then there is a remedy available under section 127 and under 127 he can prefer uh, appeal before the appellate authority so if that is electrical inspector so before electrical inspector he can challenge that assessment order also so before preferring that appeal he has to deposit 50% amount that is the provision that is also amendment under 2007 earlier it was one third amount was to be deposited now 50% amount is required to be deposited then if the assessee has accepted that uh, assessment and he has to deposit that amount but he failed to deposit that amount within that period then he has to deposit after 30 days means th within 30 days he has to deposit that amount but beyond that 30 days period 16% interest will be charged 16% per annum interest will be charged and that will be compounded every 6 months that provision is available under section 126 okay then 
then there is a provision related to offences and penalties covered under section 135 to 114 126 is unauthorized use of electricity whereas this 135 to 114 this 126 is a in investigation and enforcement regarding the unauthorized use of electricity but these are the offences under the offences under section 135 to 140 so in that case 135 is the theft of electricity theft of electric lines for and material then 137 is a punishment for receiving stolen property various provisions are there available then 130 is a interference with the meters so like that there are separate section 135 to 140 and penalties are prescribed in the section the offences under section 135 to 140 are cognizable and non valuable offenses but there is a provision for compounding of those offenses that provision is given under section 152 that compounding of offenses is available under 152 there are specific amounts and penalties are provided that way the offense can be compounded in case of theft of electricity where the load abstracted consumer in case of theft of electricity then what is the provision of imposing penalty and what are the um, conviction means what type of penalty can be charged so they, these are the provisions available if the load there are two categories if the load is below 10 kw generally we see that our residential connections are they are having load less than 10 kw if it is less than 10 kw load then fine imposed on first conviction will be three times the financial gain on account of such theft of electricity and in case of sec second and subsequent conviction then that fine will be six times of the financial gain on account of such theft of electricity but for that if the connected load is more than 10 kw then the penalties are much more stringent in that case for the first conviction three times penalty can be charged for the financial gain but for the second conviction there is a provision for imprisonment of not less than 6 months and can be extended to the five years period and with fine six times of fine financial gain on account of theft of electricity so these these two sections are we have to keep in mind that section 126 and 127 and then theft uh, cases from 135 to 140 these are excluded from the jurisdiction of the consumer for us even they they are excluded from the jurisdiction of the consumers grievance redresser forum established under the electricity act also there is a judgment from the honorable supreme court in the matter of up power versus ani zahman civil that i will share that uh, the judgment also citation also i will share where the honorable supreme court had categorically observed that although the consumer protection act uh, has the power this consumer protection uh, act uh, is superior to electricity act as far as these provisions are concerned suppose but still theft of electricity or unauthorized use of electricity cannot be categorized as a deficiency in services and that cannot be tried under section uh, before the consumer protection act then go to the next page then there is provision of non compliance of the directions given by the appropriate commission or non non compliance of the orders or directions suppose if any consumer goes to the cgrf established under the electricity act or suppose uh, he goes to the electricity ombudsman or any orders passed by the cgrf or the electricity ombudsman so if there is a non compliance of order so the execution there is no direct provisions available in the cgrf provisions so that execution for non compliance of order that executions are required to be filed before the 
commission only under section 146 so there are stringent provisions available in the as per the 142 also and 146 also 140 142 section 142 of the electricity act is for the punishment of non compliance of directions given by the is there any problem sir mr sir net sir mr sir pramod sir join hoy so parant aplyala sagla member lokana aplya sagla participants la sangto ki asha prakar cha ek unique ek prayog apan kelela hota to atta chalu hai you are witnessing ki kayda mcq cha madhyamatun shikvaycha karan ata urle tumchyakade email 11 divas त्या अकरा दिवसाची तयारी आहे म्हटल्यानंतर वेगवेगळ्या विषयांना आता एम सी क्यू च्या माध्यमातूनच तयार करायचं येस प्रभुणे साहेब हॅट जॉईंट वन ऑफ द एक्सपर्ट हॅट जॉईंट सो देअर फोर लेट अस प्रोसीड प्लीज कंटिन्यू सर येस काहीतरी प्रॉब्लेम येत आहे ना ठीक आहे ओके ओके ठीक आहे ठीक आहे येतोय आवाज माझा येतोय सर ठीक आहे सर ऍज पर सेक्शन वन फिफ्टी वन कोर्ट शेल टेक अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ ऑफेन्स पनिशेबल अंडर ऍक्ट इफ द कंप्लेंट इज मेड बाय द अप्रोप्रिएट गव्हर्नमेंट और अप्रोप्रिएट कमिशन और देअर ऑफिसर और चीफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इन्स्पेक्टर और बाय द इव्हन बाय द पोलीस ऑल्सो अर्लियर दिस प्रोव्हिजन वॉज नॉट अव्हेलेबल नाव इट इज अव्हेलेबल सो ऑल द अब इज द करेक्ट अन्सर फॉर दिस then there is a provision of establishing the special court for trying the offences under the electricity act that is provided under section 154 of the act there is a procedure and powers of the special courts are given so all offences punishable under section 135 to 40 140 and section 150 are triable before the special court special court has the power no other court can entertain the complaint against the these offenses then there is a one provision under section 161 of the act if the accidents and injuries uh, happened in during due to the electrical installation in the field then the complaints against the accident and for this accidents and injuries that can be filed before the electricity electrical inspector and electrical inspector has authority to investigate and carry out the investigation and inquiry in those matter that provision is available under section 161 these matters are also excluded from the jurisdiction of the cgrf provided under the uh, mrc regulation there are right now we can see that there are four five important regulations are related to, directly related to consumers one is the c one is the electricity act 2003 second is the 2000 amendment act 2007 then there is a supply code and standard of performances regulation 2021 then there is one more regulation is consumer grievance redressal forum and electricity ombudsman regulation 2020 earlier it was 2006 it was repealed by the latest regulation in 2020 there also this section 161 is the issue the issues related to accidents and injuries are have been excluded from their jurisdiction okay then normally we see in the our day to day working or complaints before us are we are using the terminology that low voltage or low tension means lt consumer then high voltage ht consumer then eht consumer normally we are concerned as a end user or consumer we are concerned with the lt consumer and ht consumers there are two categories 
So what is LT consumer and what is HT consumer? The voltage level provided to the consumer below 650 volts, those are considered as a LT lines. Means LT, these are the voltages, these are the LT voltages. So the, these are the LT consumers we can refer them. Those who are in the voltage range including 650 to 33,000 volts, that is 33 kV. Those are the HT consumers, which are HT lines, that is high voltage line. And extra high voltage line, that is above 33,000 volts, that is 33 kV, more than 33 kV. So mostly EHT consumers, with EHT side is for the transmission side, we can say, and but other consumers from HT and LT are available in the field below this 33,000 volts, okay? Then, section, this I have already discussed, this MERC regulation, electricity supply code and standard of performances regulations, including the power quality regulation 2021, has repealed the all other earlier regulations, that 2005 supply code, then 2005 standard of performances, then 2014 uh, standard of performances, all have been repealed by the this new supply code. Then this, there is a provision for the standard of performances I have discussed as per the new regulation, there is a provision that consumer uh, can get a automatic compensation in the distribution licensee fail to meet a standard of performances. So there are these options are available. Automatic uh, provision is also available. In some cases, there is a manual provision is also available, but there are some, they have prescribed certain limits to that. Earlier, there were no limits for that. Suppose if I, uh, suppose just I give an example that this call of complaint is lodged with the distribution licensee in urban area, if the supply is not restored within three hours period, then consumer was entitled to get a 50 rupees per hour compensation for the period uh, beyond the three hours period. There was no restriction. If the supply is not uh, restored for uh, 20 hours, then, then consumer was uh, entitled to get a thousand rupees compensation, 20 into 50 rupees per hour compensation. But now with these new regulations, they have put a cap to that. For LT consumers, it is 500 rupees. For HT consumers, it is thousand rupees. So that cap, that is the addition in the new regulation. Then 173 is 173, 174 and 175. These are important uh, provisions under the Electricity Act. What are these provisions? 173 shows that the that is the inconsistency with the law. Inconsistency with the any other law. Okay. Then 174 is act to have an overriding effect. So what is 173 and what is the that if the electricity has, if any provision of the electricity has is inconsistent with the other provision, then the effect of the electricity act will prevail. But that will want to be applicable in cases of three acts they have excluded from that provision as per section 173. Three acts, which are the three acts? Consumer Protection Act 1986, Atomic Energy Act 1962, and the Railways Act 1989. So this clearly shows that whenever there is an inconsistency with the with these three act, suppose we will take it for the Consumer Protection Act. If there is inconsistency with the Elect Consumer Protection Act, then the provisions of the Consumer Protection Act will prevail over the provisions of the Electricity Act. So there can be a question on this also. Then 174 has an overriding effect. The provisions of the Electricity Act have an overriding effect over the other acts, except these three acts. And 175 shows that this act, Electricity Act, is in addition to and not derogation with any other laws. That provision is also available under the Consumer Protection Act under Section 100 of the new act and 3 under the old act. This provision is also available. Similarly, if a consumer want to file a grievance before the CGRF established under the Electricity Act, there is also a two years period limit, limitation period is given in that CGRF regulations also. 
similarly two years period from the cause of action is available in the consumer protection act also that is quite similarity to that is main difference between the uh, consumer protection act and electricity act that regarding the definition of consumer we are aware that all commercial consumers have been excluded from the definition of the consumer under the consumer protection act but there is no such restriction available in the electricity act so any type of consumer suppose may he be a residential consumer a commercial consumer or industrial consumer or institutional consumer or agriculture consumer so without any restrictions he can approach to the consumer forum established under the electricity act he may not appear before the uh, consumer protection act or that provision is not available under the consumer protection act for the industrial consumers or for the commercial consumer uh, that provision is not available for the uh, under the consumer protection act but that are available under the cgrf regulations okay. so that the next question that i have discussed the residential commercial industrial industrial all type of consumers can uh, seek a grievance redressal before the cgrf next question is about the pecuniary jurisdiction available to the cgrf and pecuniary jurisdiction available under the consumer protection act there is no restriction is available to the cgrf established under the electricity act so we can see that without any limit the complaint can be grievances can be raised before the cgrf okay then section 40 is this question submission given to this so these are the two questions these are the tricky question what what under the cgrf uh, regulations there is no provision for the distribution licensee to prefer appeal against that order if the cgrf order is passed in favor of complainant only appeal can be preferred by the complainant this distribution licensee has either distribution licensee has to comply with the order or to challenge it under the writ jurisdiction before the honorable high court but consumer can challenge the appeal before the electricity ombudsman there is a provision to file appeal or representation they call it as a representation under that act and he can prefer appeal before the electricity ombudsman okay so similarly these are the two questions available consumer can appear but the distribution licensee cannot appear before the electricity ombudsman in the appeal okay then this regular that already we have discussed that 126 135 cases have been excluded from the jurisdiction of the cgrf then non compliance also we have discussed uh, then grid grid means a high voltage system that is the backbone of the system what is the generally we use a grid state connected grid interstate grid intra state grid these are the technical aspects so in short we can say that grid where the all power stations are pumping the electricity in the grid and that is transmitted through the transmission lines and that is distributed to the end consumers through distribution system then electricity act has repealed the all earlier acts that is 1910 act 1948 act electricity regulatory commission act uh, 1998 all acts have been repealed by the this act now just we will take a discussion about the section 562 recovery beyond the period of 2 years there are two judgments this uh, i have taken these judgments also in the mcq at the end of this mcq i have taken these four judgments we have already seen that up power uh, bar uh, power corporation judgment where the jurisdiction of the consumer court as well as cgrf have been excluded for the 135 and 126 cases but as far as the provision of past recovery from the areas under section 562 there are two recent judgments from the honorable supreme court one judgment is from the ajmer vidyut vitran nigam limited versus rehmatullah khan where honorable supreme court has said what beyond the two years period licensee is not permitted to recover the amount under section 56 and cannot uh, effect uh, cannot use the remedy force you remedy of disconnection of electricity but that does not bar him from recovering that amount through other mode that was the observation because suppose there is a recovery for the period of uh, suppose today is the 23 suppose he wants to recover some license he wants to recover from 2018 any 6 months arrears period or something they have some problem or they have applied a wrong power factor for that some there are 
human error on their side and they discovered their mistake at a later side later on 2023 then what are the options available they can recover that amount in the 2023 also but not under section 56 through other modes they can recover but the most important issue in was involved in this case was what is the first due of bill because when we receive a bill every month suppose here licensee has raised a bill in the january 18 that the consumer has paid that bill so whether the first due of that bill will be january 18 or if the mistake is discovered in the 2023 then the bill or assessment for that escape billing or short billing issued by the licensee then that is to be considered as a first due that was the issue so in that case in these those those cases in both the, sorry in both cases honorable supreme court has observed that when they have discovered the mistake so period of limitation will start from the detection of mistake and when they have detected the mistake and they, when they have raised the bill that will be the first due date so that uh, view was also confirmed in the latest judgment of prem cotex versus uttar haryana bijli vitran nigam uh, on pass by it was there the honorable supreme court had observed that if the bill is not raised by the distribution licensee there there is then there is no question of neglecting of paying the bill means the provisions available under section 56 if anybody neglects to pay a bill then that course you measures can be adopted against them but the, when the bill is itself is not raised against them the how you can say that he, he has uh, neglected to pay so whenever they have detected the mistake as a escape billing they have raised the assessment they have raised the bill supplementary bill so from that day that will be the first due date so these are the things just i want to discuss with you on the, about the section 56 two provisions so this is all about my uh submissions about this uh, section mcqs and all those details so i will just i will stop here i will share these files uh, to the all participant in the soft form this mcq file all regulations act and all those things simultaneously the judgments also i will share if required and if you have any query then we can have a questions on these uh, discuss issues else we will stop thank you sir thank you very much sir on behalf of bar council of maharashtra and goa i extend my sincere thanks to shri avinash kabune sir uh, before saying more, much more i request our coordinator yes sir thank you uh, uh, our coordinator arushka madam and before she uh, proposes a vote of thank uh, there is an announcement उद्या चला तो संध्या अपल लेक्चर है अनेक लोक जी मगनी है आधार वरती बार काउंसिल ऑफ महाराष्ट्र गोवा अपने अशा प्रकार से एम सी क्यू घेन है सो देर फोर देर विल बी ए ड्राफ्ट क्वेश्चन पेपर विच विल बी एवेलेबल हा आइडेंटिकल नु अपनी प्रैक्टिस वावी मन अपने करता ड्राफ्ट क्वेश्चन पेपर तैयार करना चाहिए काम बार काउंसिल तैयार करता है अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट आम्मी आप सगवेगे रिसोर्स पर्सन विनंती के लिए एंड दे विल बी गिविंग अस डिफरंट टाइप्स ऑफ द एम सी क्यू लाइक प्रभुणे साहब हेज डन प्रभुणे साहब ने अपने एक नवीन वेग पद्धति हा कायदा शिकवला जतन एम सी क्यू या मध्यम सग तैयार होना आई आर प्रपोजिंग कि एम सी क्यू या बेसिज वरती अपनी तैयारी जास्त करावी आबरबरी जे का लीगल एस ए जनरल नॉलेज है ये सुधा अपन तैयारी करावी अकरा दिवस उरले आप सग भरभरून शुभेच्छा कि आप लवकर लवकर या परीक्षे की तैयारी लगाव अपन जर 
सब्जेक्ट जर का अजु शोधत सब्जेक्ट पर बेरैक गोला करावे जुने पेपर तपास बेचान अपने सग तैयारी वहां लगे विथ दिस नाउ आई एम रिटर्निंग दिस माइक टू द कॉर्डिनेटर टू विल मेक अनाउंसमेंट अबाउट द टुमारोज से उद्या संध्या भेटू उद्या शिरीष देश पांडे मुंबई ग्राहक पंचायती से अपने करता पर घेन एक चांगी वेग कंजुमर वर चाहिए लेक्चर रिटर्निंग बैक टू द अनुष्का थैंक यू एवरीबडी थैंक यू सर ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ बार काउंसिल ऑफ महाराष्ट्र एंड गोवा एक्सचेंज माई सिंसियर थैंक्स टू श्री अविनाश प्रभु ने मेम्बर एडिशनल सी डी आर सी नागपुर फॉर स्पेरिंग इज वैल्युएबल टाइम and preparing such a tedious doing such a tedious job of preparation of mcqs for all the participants thank you very much sir sir apan ha jo apla bahumulya vel dilela ahe ani je mcqs banavlele ahe te nakkis aplya participant na karach molacha margadarshan par ugnar ahe ya badal mi apli shatashah abari ahe thank you sir thank you thank you thank you i also extend my sincere thanks to the coordinator of the present lecture series Advocate Dr. Uday Varunji Kar Sir, every day Sir is connected with every speaker and Sir is guiding us. Sir, thank you very much. Now also I extend my thanks to all the to the chairman, Sri Patil Sir, Vice Chairman Sri Sangram Desai Sir, and all other respected members of BCMG. Now I announce about tomorrow's lecture. Tomorrow. Will be one more sessions. You already have heard about Adokesh Shirish Deshpande sir. Tomorrow again you will be there. Be please so please be connected. Now I extend my thanks to all the participants. All the participants. Thank you very much. Now with permission of our coordinator, Adokesh Doctor Uday Prakash Varunjikar sir, I declare that today's session is over. Okay thank you